Hello everyone, Joseph Ross back here and welcome to our monthly newsletter. I wanted to share an image from Zion National Park up in the Narrows that I captured a couple years back. And I wanted to demonstrate a few processing techniques in Photoshop um, using luminosity masks and dodging and burning as well as a color fill adjustment to basically add a lot of depth to the image and help lead the viewer's eye through the shot. So as you can see in this image, it has a lot of great lines from the uh, rushing water and the texture of the canyon wall running into the background of the photograph. And I would like to accentuate that um, through development. So let's jump into this and I'm going to show you guys how I would work the image. What you're going to need here is a set of actions for creating custom luminosity masks. I like to use Tony Kuiper's TK masks and you can get those at www.goodlight.us. Um, they are excellent, they are inexpensive, and they are very easy to use once you learn how the panels are laid out. I will be using TK's Rapid Mask Panel which will allow me to make custom selections based on luminosity, whether I'm using lights or darks, and also using color mask adjustments as well. <clears throat> so what I would like to do in this image is to first select a mask that accentuates the water down here in the foreground. I want to lighten this water, but I want to create a mask so when I use the dodge tool, and I lighten this area, I'm only bringing up the highlights in the water. I won't be affecting the darker tones in the region. And this is going to help move the eye up into these rapids here into the middle ground of the image. So my first thing is to come over to the TK Rapid Mask panel and I need to look for a selection. Now there is quite a bit of yellow orange in the water here that I want to accentuate. So the first thing I'm going to try to do is come up to my source panel and scroll on color and then go down to the yellow selection. This is going to now create a custom mask based on the yellow pixels in the image. And we'll see how this does. That did a pretty good job down here. I maybe would want to expand the contrast of this a little bit more. So down here in my rapid mask panel, I can come down to uh, where it says modify and I can expand that selection. And now you'll see that those areas have gotten a little bit brighter down here. And that the way that masks work in Photoshop is that when I apply this to an adjustment layer or dodging and burning or really anything that I'm doing to manipulate or modify the image, that will allow that adjustment to shine through only on the parts of the image that are highlighted in white. Any area that is in black or a darker tone is going to receive either no or very little adjustment to the shot. So now that I have my mask selection, I'm going to come down here into the output section of the rapid mask panel and click on layer and go to dodge. And what you'll see happened over here was I got a dodge burn layer with this mask linked to this adjustment. So now with my brush, I can tap B for my brush. I want to make sure that white is my foreground color and I want to have my opacity of the brush pretty low, around 30% to start with, and I'm simply going to get in here and start to lighten the tonality in the water just by clicking, holding, and brushing down over this section of the image. And as you'll see, as I brush out around the edge of the canyon wall, because that is not included in the mass selection, it's not lightening that area. It's also not lightening this region of water, which is darker. It's only lightening the lighter orange versions of the water, which is what I want it to do. This is going to help push the eye into the vortex of the water and the canyon wall meeting here in the middle ground of the photograph. If I turn that layer off, you can clearly see how this is moving the eye into the image a little bit better. So that's a good start to the shot. What I'd like to do next is work on moving the eye in through the wall and then through the rapids. We want the eye to converge into the center and be transported into the back of the image. 
So I'm going to go and make another selection up here with my TK Rapid Mask Panel. I want to make sure that I X out that first selection that I made. <clears throat> and this time I'm going to work on some of the highlights up here. So I'm going to go into my Lights Panel and click on number two. We'll start there and see what that looks like. And that looks really good. So I can actually start to bring out some of these highlights in here, keeping the darker tones their original um, density. So I'm going to go ahead and go down to Layer, and click up on Dodge, and get my new adjustment layer right here. And I can start to paint in a little bit more highlight detail into the wall. And this should hopefully start to move the eye once again into that vortex of the image, okay? Because you can see what's happening here. Very, very subtle, which is what I want my adjustments always to be. Let me zoom in on the image and look around. You can see that there's excellent detail and that lightning is not bleeding over from pixel to pixel and creating any sort of weird aberrations or um, bad stuff in the image. So it's, it's looking quite nice. All right, so that looks good. I'm happy with that. Um, lastly, I want to lighten these cascades a little bit on this side. I can check on this mask really quick by clicking on Alt Option, holding that and clicking down. And I can see that this section of water is also highlighted nicely um, with this mask selection. So I'm just going to quickly go in and start to paint some brighter tones over here in the water as well. Okay, And I'm going to bring the opacity of my brush up from 30 to 60 to lighten this up a little bit more. Okay. So here we go. Well, that's a little too much. So let's get a step back on that and bring that opacity back down to maybe 17%. That's much better. Okay. <clears throat> so let's just bring the eye into the image just like so. Perfect. All right. Now, the other thing that I'd like to do to the shot is add a little bit more glow into the background. There's already a natural glow happening from the bounce light and the position of the sun in the image, but I want to accentuate that a little bit. So I am going to create a, a merge visible layer. That's a pixel bearing, la a pixel bearing layer. And I'm going to hold down Shift, Option, Command, E. Shift, Option, Command, E. And you'll see that I get my new layer. I'm going to add a little bit of Gaussian blur to that. So I'm going to go up to the Filter tab, go down to Blur, select Gaussian Blur. And I typically set the radius of the blur to the megapixel count of the camera. So this is with the, um, this is an older image. This is probably taken with the D, let's see, the D810. So that's a 36 megapixel camera. So I'll set the radius to 36. If this had been an image that I had taken recently with my D850, that is a 46 megapixel camera, I'd be setting the radius to 46. So you get the idea of where you want to set the radius and the pixel count. And then click OK. The entire image right now will be sort of blurry, but that's all right. That's kind of where we want it to be. Next thing I want to do is change the blending mode to soft light. And that's going to create a very contrasty look. Don't fret. This is not going to last much longer. Um, we need to do a few more adjustments to bring out the glow in the image for this. So the next thing we're going to do is go up to Image, Adjustment, and Curves. And we're going to take the highlight region of the curve and we're going to push it up pretty high. Good. And then click OK. And then the last thing I'm going to do is go to Image, Adjustments, and then I'm going to find Solid Color. Which I don't actually see in here. So what I'll do here is I'm going to go up into Color Balance. I'm going to push the reds up a little bit. Right there. Click OK. All right, now I need to apply this to just the brightest tones in my image. So I'm going to go back into my TK panel, and I'm going to once again click X. I do that every time just to make sure that I'm starting with um, starting from the beginning on creating these masks. And I'm going to go into lights number one and take a look at that. And that looks pretty good, but I may it may be a little much. So let's try number two. And I think I'm going to go with number two and just really keep it to the more um, 
brighter regions of the image. And then I'm going to hit like apply. And that mask is now associated with that adjustment that I made. And we can see the difference and how we've created a little bit of glow in the highlights, in the background, and the water. So let's look at a before and an after. So this is the image, what it looked like coming straight out of Lightroom with very minor adjustments. And then this is after our dodging and our Gaussian blur, or basically an Orton effect for our highlights. You can see that it gives the image a lot of shine and a little bit more life and a little bit more pop. Well, look, I hope this tutorial helps you guys out in your post-processing. I would love to see you on a future workshop. Think about coming with me to Zion in the fall. We have an amazing workshop scheduled from November 4th through the 8th where we'll be exploring all of the canyons in the park, including hiking the famous Virgin River Narrows where this image was captured. Um, the light is always gorgeous there in November and you mix in the autumn color through the main canyon and it is one of the most spectacular places for landscape photography in the United States and especially in the Southwest. So make sure you check the website um, and look for that listing. We would love to have you there, and I'll see you next month with another photo tip. Best of light, and be safe.